Honda's new mini electric car is shockingly good. I'm surprised. This is actually a proper EV that I think a lot of people will buy, especially if it's priced well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Honda. This is their new EV. They just revealed this today. And we know a few details about it. We know the size, the range it has. We know it has vehicle to load technology that's been approved from Honda, which is great. I mean, no one would have expected that. I think that's a, a huge surprise. The range is um, not awesome, but um, it's not too bad. First of all, it has 47 kilowatt. That's 63 horsepower. Doesn't sound like much, but... I mean, this is not a particularly big car. It has 150 miles of range. That's 245 kilometers. So what else do we know about this vehicle? Well, for one, it was just revealed in Japan. And these cars in Japan are, well, they're the most popular type of car you can buy. These small key cars, they call them. It's a boxy car. And I think that makes it kind of practical. You know, they have a sh pretty short bonnet. So it's sort of basically a box that I think looks not bad for a box, but, you know, 3.4 metres long. That's how big it is. 3,400 millimetres long. That's 134 inches. And, yeah, I mean, 50 kilowatt DC charging apparently, which is a bit disappointing, but I think the range isn't too bad. 152 miles of range, 245 kilometres that's not too bad. Now, there isn't too bad. 152 miles of range, 245 kilometers. That's not too bad. Now, there is a van version of this. It's called the N-Van. Uh, and that's actually not a bad car as well, I'd say. But interior-wise, what, what do you guys think about the interior? I think it looks very, very, very budget, surprisingly budget, but... Um, kind of weirdly retro cool i don't know why weirdly guys i just did a video today on a new electric car or well, an updated version of an ev you can buy in china it's literally one third of the estimated price of this car one third it has a big touch screen using it utilizes deep seek ai uh, it has similar range to this vehicle so these japanese micro cars they're, they're pretty cool but chinese ones are even better, and they are much, much, much cheaper. So that's what it has to compete with. But in China, there's not a whole lot of Chinese key cars yet. There will be pretty soon, though. One pedal driving. There's still a lot of electric cars that don't have single pedal driving. You've got to use the brake in an EV, and I think it's better not to have to do that. So one pedal driving is one of the features, apparently, that this does have. There's a shelf below the touchscreen as well that provides an obvious place to put your smartphone. Um, that's might You might want to use that for navigation, potentially. That would probably make sense. Now, what else do we know? There is no charging ports to recharge your phone. So this is very much a budget car. The rear seats will fold flat, providing a 50-50 split to maximize practicality. And there is a vehicle to load that enables you to use the N1 to power your house. If there was a power outage, you could power your electric bike, your laptop, computer, uh, many different things. To use vehicle to load, owners need to purchase though an adapter from Honda's accessory catalog, which includes a dash top LED indicator to let you know how full the battery is. And in addition to that, on apparently there's also a sporty cosmetic kit with twin Shelby style stripes. So if you want to get you want to modify your little Honda EV, you can get sports stripes to go on it. Is this vehicle coming to other countries? It's not coming to the United States, apparently, says Honda. Email them, though. You never know. I mean, send them some emails. Tell them you want it. But it is coming to Europe. So Europe's a big place. Uh, is it coming to China? No, it would get destroyed in China. There's too many other options that are much cheaper. Japan and Europe so far. Other markets, yeah, United States has been ruled out, but I'm not sure about potentially Australia. So as I mentioned before, it does have vehicle to load and it's got vehicle to home. I think that makes it a, a decent vehicle. 
it is ugly. Um, the version of this that we saw, the concept version, looked awesome. I don't know why they – I mean, I wish they could have made it look more like that concept version. That thing looked – had like flared fenders, uh, like a wide body stance. It looked fantastic. Unfortunately, it looks – I mean, nothing like that at all. Now, I should point out there's a lot of recycled materials used in this vehicle. Uh, and apparently the grill is made from discarded bumpers. The carpeting and insulation is made from materials like PET or PET bottles and old employees' work clothing. Yeah, interesting. So the van version of this, it's called the N-Van E. That has a little less range. It's got 245 kilometers of range, whereas this has closer to 260 kilowatt of range. And its single electric motor produces 47 kilowatt, it's about 65 horsepower, and 162 newton meters of torque. It'll DC fast charge at 50 kilowatt and charge on AC power at six kilowatt. Pricing, I'm not sure what the price is gonna be, but the van version of this costs 27,800 Australian dollars, so $28,000. I'm gonna guess the electric uh, hatch version will be about 20,000 Australian dollars, probably about, my estimate would be 14,000 US dollars. So, I mean, it's good, but at this price, it's pretty expensive in comparison to its obvious competition in China. Now, I should mention, guys, there is a range of, Honda makes a range of key cars, including the petrol-powered N1, the N-Box, the N-Wagon, and the N-Van, and this is what they look like. Honda says the N1e inherits the endearing exterior design, spacious interior space. It's not spacious, but for its size, I think it's pretty spacious. An easy handling of the N360, one of the brand's first vehicles that was launched in 1967 which didn't have power steering, so it probably didn't handle that well. Anyway, the N1, what are some of its rivals in Japan? Well, there's the Nissan Sakura, there's the Mitsubishi EKX twins, and there's uh, the BYD Seagull, which I believe is gonna be on sale pretty soon there in Japan. Probably the most similar vehicle outside of China in Western countries anyway, that compares to this would be the Hyundai or Hyundai Insta City EV. It is a bit bigger, not a lot bigger, but it is a bit bigger, it's 3,825 millimeters long. So it's a few inches bigger and it has 84 kilowatt of power. So a bit more power. It's also got a lot more range at 360 kilometers of range, but it's not cheap, it's $39,000 in Australia. So it's about 26,000 US dollars. Um, this, you know, this is going to market in Europe. That's what it will compete with, though. It's also going to compete with the BYD Seagull, which is called the, uh, the BYD Dolphin Surf, I believe. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Would you consider one of these if it was affordable, cheap in your country? Let us know in the comments. Bye-bye.